Whatever you learn, learn it well. Whatever branch you study, make yourselves masters as far as you go. Education is limitless, boundless, endless. Because we do not happen to be elected to Congress, it does not follow that we should not be as wise as those who are. And because we are adapted for different occupations and pursue them, that does not prove that one cannot become learned and ascend the scale of science equal with the statesman, divine, or jurist. Pursue this course, and your names will be inscribed in living letters upon the pages of sacred history. The town of Grantsville is located on the shores of the Great Salt Lake, an arid, windswept area, and the boyhood setting for J. Reuben Clark. His father, Joshua Reuben, was a Civil War veteran who'd come to Utah from Montana, married Mary Louisa Woolley, and settled down to farm the desert. Reuben was the oldest of nine children. He shared work with his closest brothers, Edwin and Elmer. This forenoon, Reuben helped cut the weeds, raked up the lucerne, and while I was gone, he hoed some of the cane. Reuben does very well for a young boy. May he grow up to manhood and become a bright star in the great latter-day work is my prayer and heartfelt desire. Grantsville was a hard country where his parents lived. They had a difficult time. It was not an easy place to farm, to carry on their activities, and he knew something of poverty. They didn't have any money. He didn't have any money as a boy. He grew up in what today we would call poverty. He learned to work from the very earliest age. I guess from the time he was five or six, he was, he was doing chores that were imported around the farm. And uh, he's the one who really learned, wanted to learn. And he not only learned to work, but he learned to learn. And he loved learning. February 13th, 1884. I thought it too cold to send Edwin and Elmer to school today, but Reuben would rather miss his meals than miss a day from school. With spring, another season of farming in the brushlands of Grantsville lay ahead for the Clark family. Reuben drew strength from the spiritual devotion with which his father dedicated their fields. Reuben and I went down between the barley and wheat and knelt down and prayed. I dedicated the grain that we have sown and asked the blessings of the Lord upon it. This I do every year with everything I plant. At the end of a hard day's work, Reuben would pore over the books from his father's modest library. He was a driven youth he had that power plant just sort of radiating basically his whole life. And that sense of wanting to go someplace, wanting to be someplace, wanting to separate himself in some measure from the background in which he had grown up and to go beyond the horizons of his world and to make a mark beyond the horizons of his world. 
In January of 1883, Grantsville opened a new school and advanced several students to higher levels. Reuben was among them. Reuben attended church with his family and was part of the young men's auxiliary. He delivered his first 10-minute talk before a joint young men and women's meeting in the Tooele Stake. His subject, biographical sketch of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was a cherished topic. 60 years later, he would publish Our Lord of the Gospels. Young Thomas S. Monson, printer of the book, worked with him on the manuscript. I met with him every weekday, uh, Monday through Friday, two in the afternoon, until he got through. And it was a great learning exp experience for me. I believe he regarded me as a son or grandson, and I regarded him as a mentor to me. I learned more from him in that space of a year as we worked on his book than I did in all of my college education. By 1889, Reuben had wrung out of Grantsville all the formal education the little school offered. In fact, he attended eighth grade three times because he couldn't bear that school should end. Reuben continued to work on the farm, but also assisted his father in his new job as the county tax assessor and collector. Copying tax assessment rolls and performing secretarial duties still did not quench his desire to learn. Five days before his son's 19th birthday, Joshua Sr. wrote the following entry. Reuben will go with us to the city in the morning. He will stop in and visit the Latter-day Saints College. It was there Reuben met the new principal, James E. Talmadge, a man who would shape the course of his life. Dr. Talmadge recognized the potential of the young farm boy and offered Reuben a position as assistant curator for the church's newly established Deseret Museum. I don't know how anyone could have had a better mentor than James E. Talmadge. And I believe that President Clark carried that same spirit over as he became a mentor to others. He gave encouragement to young people. He wanted them to succeed, to be successful. And he was always encouraging and positive and helpful in leading young people in nurturing their ambition and helping them to move ahead. Over the next few years, Reuben worked diligently as clerk and curator, overseeing the collections of the Deseret Museum. It was during this time that Reuben's brother Elmer came to Salt Lake City for a medical exam because of chest pains. The pain stemmed from infection discovered during surgery. 16-year-old Elmer died five days after the operation. Two days following Elmer's funeral, Joshua received a call to serve a mission to the northern states. In Joshua's journal again, over and over again, he has things, entries that say something like, today I received $5 from Reuben. Today, I received $15 from Reuben. So in effect, Reuben was going to the, working in the Deseret Museum on, with Brother Talmadge, of course, and making whatever he could make, keeping himself in school, and at the same time, trying to support or sustain his father as a missionary. As the newly appointed president at the University of Utah, Talmadge secured entrance for his protege. Reuben joined the debate team and served as editor of the school's newspaper, The Chronicle. Reuben's usual route to school took him past the home of renowned Salt Lake photographer, C.R. Savage, where his daughter, Louisine, lived. He was devoted to school and gave up every pleasure to get an education. He was paying his way through school but had a long, hard struggle. I soon discovered that I was falling in love with this studious boy from Grantsville. As their courtship continued, Reuben's education was coming to an end. 
completing six years of academic work and only four, Rubin graduated from the University of Utah in June of 1898 as class valedictorian. He was 26 years old. God has given each of us talents. He's given each of us skills. And these, this endowment he expects us to use for the benefit of holy purposes. And he had a mind, and he had a will, and he had a great heart, and he expected to use those in the service of high purpose his entire life. Shortly after graduation, in September 1898, Reuben and Lewisine were married in the Salt Lake Temple by James E. Talmadge. I officiated in the sealing ordinance of marriage between Joshua Reuben Clark and Lewisine Annetta Savage. A more faithful man than he is in any of the capacities in which we have been associated, I could not name and could hardly desire to find. I feel he's leaving me as keenly as I think I would feel the departure of a son. After five years of teaching school, Reuben accepted a position at the LDS College where he'd been a student. It was offered by Principal Joseph Nelson. Reuben had been reading law at night, but was not progressing as quickly as he would have liked. He was teaching full time and at age 30, the father of two daughters, Louise and Marion. He described himself as a poor young man with a wife and two children, having no property, without any security, with nothing but what might be called an urgent desire to study. The hunger to learn was still there, but there was no law school in Utah. Reuben lacked the funds for tuition and living expenses, and there was the difficulty of moving his family. Law school seemed only a dream until Joseph Nelson, his employer and friend, opened the door. Joseph Nelson told Reuben, you go, you can pick any law school you want, and I will pay your tuition for you. Reuben accepted, of course. Eventually, he paid it all back. But, of course, Joseph Nelson was the one who made it possible for him to go to law school. On September 19th, 1903, Reuben, his wife and two children boarded the Los Angeles Limited Steamliner heading to New York. The barefoot farm boy from Grantsville had been accepted to Columbia University's School of Law. He was 32 years old. Theodore Roosevelt was president, and Marie Curie had just received the Nobel Prize in Physics when Reuben began his studies at Columbia. He immediately went to work. He was self-motivated, he was driven. And he would sit back in those dusty books until the cows had gone home in order to get that last little bit, that last little quote, that last citation. I mean, he was so well suited for that. It was just a perfect match, a perfect marriage of personality, temperament, and, and task. In the spring of 1905, he was approached by one of his professors, James Brown Scott, who was looking for the most capable student he could find. Beginning as Scott's research assistant eventually led to a prominent assignment at the Department of State. Scott was made solicitor, and Reuben joined him as his assistant. Reuben moved his family into a small apartment off Culver Street in Washington, D.C. He had not yet sought a job the work had come to him, and he had responded. It was to be a pattern for the rest of his life. The solicitor was an important figure in the State Department in those days. James Brown Scott wasn't on the job very much of the time, and the Secretary of State wasn't on the job much of the time. 